And Lynn, you're all set when you're ready. Okay. So, um, good morning, everyone, and welcome to National Distance Learning Week. Um, I am Lynn Ling. I'm a graduate student and an adjunct lecturer at the University at Albany. And I'm also a graduate student worker with the uh, Online Teaching and Community Engagement Unit within SUNY Online. Um, so it's my pleasure today to introduce our speaker, Heather Jones. Heather is an artist and a professor of fine arts at SUNY Genesee Community College. She's also a Fulbright Scholar and a SUNY Online Teaching Ambassador. Heather has been recognized with the SUNY Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Scholarship and Creative Activities. She's always creating through her artwork. She explores environmental connections and sustainable um, narratives. So welcome, Heather. Thank you very much. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, so I will kind of get into, I'll share my screen so I can kind of get into this. And I want to thank you for the invitation. It's it's a pleasure to share this project with uh, SUNY Online and the uh, other SUNY faculty who may be interested in doing something like this. Uh, you know, I think the the environment of education is changing, and there's so many new ways that we can engage with students. Um, this project, the Color Connection, actually started. Uh, in 2017, uh, I actually did the COIL program and met Jose Luis Gonzalez Cabrero. He hopefully will be logging in soon, so he'll be here for Q&A. Uh, but what we did is we went through that program and we really were able to learn through COIL, SUNY COIL, how to engage students using technology in a creative way. And then we worked together from 2017 to 2024, uh, where we really were able, we did a variety of different design projects between students from Mexico and SUNY GCC over those years. And we got better and better at it. And we kept kind of building our skill set, you know, as a team. And so that led to uh, the Fulbright Scholarship that I applied for in 2024. They were enthusiastically sponsored our, our plan, uh, where we did the Color Connection Project between students from UASLP, University of San Luis Potosi, and SUNY Genesee Community College. And I was able to live in Mexico for three months, teaching there, and simultaneously teaching my five online courses at GCC. And then having all the students from both, both colleges participate in this project together. And this was only possible because of online teaching. All right, so uh, that's why I, I, I signed up to share this here. So uh, the, the project did have a great amount of support between both countries, Fulbright and SUNY. Um, so Fulbright was uh, the sponsor for this project for the piece, at least of, for me to go to Mexico. But, you know, the rest of it was online and we were able to really keep, uh, keep this col cultural collaboration pretty reasonable as far as cost goes, you know, which does matter, uh, by using technology the way we did for student engagement for this project. Hi, Jose. Thanks for joining. <laughs> hi. Hi. Hi to all. Mm -hmm. So actually, you're, you're perfect. Your timing's perfect. <laughs> I was waiting. So, I was waiting in the waiting room. Yeah. So Jose, uh, Jose and I have been, again, working together since 2017. And I think we've learned so much about how to engage students between cultures. One of our motives, I would say, is to really give students who can't can't afford to travel or can't do the study abroad programs, how do we give them the opportunity to engage with uh, people from other cultures? You know, and how do we do that in the format of the classroom? And what we learned through COIL is we, you know, we can creatively use technology in so many ways to, to do that, to give students that opportunity. And that's what we really did here. You know, we used a variety of different tools to engage them on the subject of color. Why the subject of color? Uh, well, I teach uh, fine arts and 2D design. 
which is color is one of the elements of design that we, you know, it's our SLO we have to cover. And then Jose teaches industrial design, which also in his student learning outcomes, color is one of those design elements that he needs to cover as well. So we really looked for like, what are the SLOs that overlap between the courses? And then color stood out to us, uh, especially in our pilot programs that were smaller than this one, uh, because we saw that students all had a personal connection to color and and could relate to color, even if language was difficult, even if, um, you know, if if they struggled with uh, the, the, the technology, color was something that everyone can relate to. So we felt that color was a good design bridge to focus on for this project. Uh, and so that's that's what we did for this piece. And so I'll introduce to you what our project is all about. So the Color Connection is, is an international cultural color study project. And what we're focusing on here is you know, uh, you can see our student learning out outcomes on the on the right column. We wanted students to develop that larger global view and a sense of em empathy for other cultures in the collaboration that we put together. Uh, we also wanted students; these are art students, right? We want that we wanted them to have the opportunity to really pr practice design skills using color and critical thinking methodologies. You know, really creatively think about how to use color to tell their story, how to tell uh, other people, you know, what color meant to them, uh, which color is, you know, it's one of those things like we all have subliminal meanings when we think of red, yellow, blue, there's so much emotional expressive content there. Uh, and in, you know, just for hum human expression. And then as artists, uh, it's there's so much possibility to really articulate that expression through visual arts and industrial design. So we were really focused on that. How do we make that connection? And interestingly, also between cultures, there were certain things that were really similar in ideas of color. And then there were these beautiful things that were really unique and different. So the students were able to really learn from each other, like how, you know, how the color pink uh, in, in San Luis Potosi was a really patriotic color. It was, it was a color that represents that city in a really vibrant way. And the students from Mexico were able to share that with the students in New York. Um, the students in New York were able to, it was winter, they were able to share the beauty of white through snow. They didn't think that was very beautiful, but the students in Mexico did. Uh, so they were able to really share their differences in, in really beautiful ways uh, through, fo through photographs. So what we had students do is students personally observed and captured photographs of one color in their daily lives for a few weeks. And then they shared their color photos on social media. We used Facebook and also a community uh, Instagram page, which are both still up. Uh, and they shared their photos and, and, and were able to communicate through social media. We also um, had a Zoom between my courses at GCC and the courses, uh, the course that we did in Mexico. Uh, they had that opportunity to meet. And then we also had the actual course itself, where we used Brightspace modules in um at SUNY GCC. And then we used, uh, you know, different technologies at, at uh, in Mexico as well. So what was available to us, we used uh, to really enhance the project. So the color connection, they photographed, they shared on social media, and then we had them kind of edit down and choose their best photos to submit to a juried exhibit. And in that exhibit, you'll see examples of that coming up soon. But we had simultaneously in both countries a color connection exhibit that was student led, student juried uh, from a distance. So we had students from both countries uh, in the jury process who chose the, the 250 photos that were exhibited. Uh, and then in both countries, they participated in hanging, installing, presenting the artwork. Uh, so they, you know, in both places did that. And then on social media, we shared the results. So they were able to see the exhibits in both countries. 
uh, through social media. So we we filmed those uh, receptions, for example. We shared those uh, all through social media as well. And I do have a clip of that that I'm going to share. But the results were really quite beautiful uh, in the end. Um, so I'll kind of scroll through. This is the color theory class uh, in Mexico. So much enthusiasm to participate in this project. It was really an amazing experience to interact with these students. Uh, they had the additional goal of focusing on color, material, and finish in industrial design, um, where my students were more aesthetically working with color theory in a way that how would they interact it interact with color in fine arts, uh, but both really connected, I think, on the expression of color. So uh, this class, in the color theory class, our goals were color material finish and, and how that relates to industrial design, the meaning of color psychologically and emotionally and culturally, uh, which was great to have the comparison between the two countries. The historical significance of color in global societies. We talked about how, you know, the color, the colors vary in meaning between cultures. You know, in uh, in China, red is related to, you know, even weddings, which is very different from, you know, in the U.S., white, white is the representative color of weddings. So we talked about those significant differences also in the course, both both in both courses. Uh, we covered one color each week for 10 weeks. So I would lecture on psychologically, emotionally, culturally, uh, and, you know, what that color means. And we would really deep dive into each of the 10 categories of color that we focused on. Uh, and the 10 colors were also what was representative in the exhibit in the end. We had, um, you know, a full range of color uh, that you'll see in the exhibits. So um, moving on, this is, here's some examples of the social media posts that we got from students uh, and some of their quotes that we, we got from social media. I'll just read three of them. But color plays a very important role in the way we perceive and experience the world around us. It influences our emotions and experiences by Val Cabral. Uh, colors are like a wordless language that everyone can understand, no matter where we are, we, no matter where we are from. And this is from Melissa. Uh, and then we are truly surrounded by color. And it surprised me to see how each place is defined by specific colors. Sandra, um, these are just some of the really meaningful um, quotes and interactions that we got from the students interacting on social media. And you can really see why I think from the photographs, uh, this why this was interesting to the students. Um, you know, for example, yellow, if you if you focus on the yellow slide, you can really see some of the beauty of the uh, colorful architecture of San Luis Potosi. You know, uh, I think that really stands out. And then when you look at white, you can see some of that beauty I was talking about, about winters in upstate New York uh, and how beautiful that was to the Mexican students who don't experience that. And then some of them really just stood out to be very universal. Like I think uh, the example here of red is, is quite universal. You know, in both countries, if you went through the market, you would find these types of reds, right? Um, and so we could really relate to that. Um, you know, in orange, we see, Jose, what was the picture the, the, to the left there, the floral pattern? It's uh, from uh, day, the Dia de Muertos, Day of the Dead, and okay. the color of the flower, Sempasuchil, is very orange. So beautiful, such a beautiful photograph. And I loved that then we had, it's small, but the, the Halloween of upstate New York is in there as well, you know? So you could see how students shared their culture and their, their celebrations through the photographs in really, really beautiful ways. So um, the results were really quite, quite amazing. And I think, you know, it was uh, also an opportunity 
not only did we have this, the classes from both of these colleges participating in this project, but we had the alumni of our social media participating in the project. We had other faculty. I had, for example, um, a sociology professor from Genesee Community College who was very engaging. Um, one of my best friends from growing up just followed the project and really got into, you know, talking to the students as well, because this was a public project. We were able to have such a wide range of people participating in this, uh, um, the social media aspect of the project. Um, Okay, so moving on, uh, I was simultaneously teaching all of my courses at GCC. And uh, I think, you know, a lot of the questions I get from faculty is, how are you doing that? <laughs> well, first of all, uh, Jose helped me figure that out uh, as far as scheduling, you know, blocking out my Zoom classes for GCC, uh, the, the prep time that I needed to do my work at, at, in, you know, that was at Genesee Community College, and then how we kind of blocked out time also for the class in Mexico and the things that we were doing. So it was a scheduling feat, uh, but it really did work out in the end. Um, and I think that was a collaboration, you know, between between us that made that work. Uh, and then, you know, I integrated the Color Connection Project into all of my courses, online courses. So each of the courses uh, at, at Genesee Community College had one project that was dedicated to the Color Connection. So they spent a good uh, you know, four, probably four weeks of their semester working on that project, participating in that project then throughout that semester, you know, to, to align with the larger project going on in Mexico. So we did that. And, and how we did that is Brightspace. I used Brightspace as there was an assignment module. There were weekly Zoom classes. Um, I had the 10 color connection lectures that I gave in Mexico attached into their Brightspace course uh, so that they could really appreciate what was happening there and get that information. And then we also had critique discussion boards that were internal for each of those courses. And then they participated with the connection points of working on social media with the students from Mexico. They also connected... Um, they had the choice of how to connect if they joined the jury committee. So I know the student committees chose, you know, were they going to Zoom? I think most of them Zoomed. Um, or were they going to connect in mm -hmm. other formats, um, you know, through, through Facebook? They, they were able to choose uh, how they were going to connect on that part of it. So there was that. And then uh, they all participated in the juried exhibit which was really the culminating piece. Both countries uh, worked with their, you know, their galleries on campus and worked on installing mm -hmm. the shows and, and putting the shows together and then sharing that uh, with the other uh, students. So this was uh, an example of Oh, I'm sorry, this uh, I should say this is some of the faculty that uh, supported me from a distance from SUNY Geneseo, Genesee Community College. These were some of the faculty that really helped me put this together and some of the students participating. And then this is what the exhibit looked like in New York at Genesee Community College. We had uh, the gallery director and the students working with her decided to frame all of the work. And they put the work together so that it uh, kind of seamlessly flowed throughout the gallery. So all four walls, uh, the colors just flowed. You know, you can see it went from purples to reds to greens, and it just flowed together. Uh, one of the design elements that I think was important is we wanted this to be a bridge. This is a bridge about color and people and culture. So we didn't mm -hmm. highlight for example, the names of each students here and how they who did what what uh, photograph because we wanted the viewer to look at the artwork and and have to kind of guess, you know, was this taken in Mexico or was this taken in New York? You know, was this taken? Uh, is this something really universal? So I can't tell. So we wanted people to experience that. So there were QR codes for uh, the student names that were next to each color. 
So the students still had credit for their work, but it was separated out uh, intentionally so that it was a unifying experience to go through the exhibit instead of a uh, you know a defining personal personal view of of the results. So you can see we also did that in in um, Mexico, but they actually did the installation totally different. They decided uh, instead of in, like investing in frames, they invested in printing. So they had the they had the potential and opportunity to do these massive collaged prints, which turned out ab absolutely beautiful. And then they put them on wooden frames. And so each of the collages, it's the same it's the same exact juried results, but but uh, installed differently. And both were really beautiful in their own right. Uh, so you can see here the students in, also for the reception um, in Mexico decided to wear their colors. So we photographed them with their artwork, uh, which was really fun. So um, yeah, so that turned out really great. And I actually, um, here one is one of the videos that we took of that reception and we shared this uh, on social media. Yeah. I think you can really see the engagement there. <laughs> uh, it was really enjoyable, uh, the whole experience for sure, for everybody who participated. And uh, while I was uh, visiting and living in Mexico, uh, Jose, you really did a great job introducing me to, you know, other academics and we were able to engage on a radio the college radio station and meet the administration of the college and really tour around and see how uh, UASLP you know is is run and what was happening at that college and it was really a great experience just to connect at that academic level um, between the two institutions um, and then um I just uh, pulled up one of the things, this was such a gift, Jose, he had all of this, his students send me uh, videos of kind of their experience and what they felt about the Color Connection experience. So I wanted to share one of the students' um, videos. So at the start of the project, I thought it would be difficult to find places with a specific color in it. However, as the time went by, I realized that we might have noticed, but we are surrounded by color, especially in a vibrant city like St. Louis. You can find every color of the rainbow as you walk around during the day. So here and there, we live in a very colorful world. It was interesting to compare where people from New York find the same colors, but in different places than we do here. So if you're interested, please go and see your work at the Color Connection Expo. It's so beautiful. You know, and each of the students did one of these videos. And I know those were shared uh, through their campus um, so that other people got to hear their experience. We also shared these um, short clips on our social media platform. So the students in New York were able to hear the, you know, how they felt about the collaborative experience as well. And, you know, if you notice, uh, she's speaking in English, uh, the students got English credits for taking this course and were able to practice their English in uh, both verbal and written form through their connections with the students in New York. So I wish it could have been the other way around, but the students in New York really don't didn't have enough of a basis uh, to do that, uh, that same reciprocal language exchange. But I do think that it was really quite beneficial uh, as far as the just simply the practice of language as well. And color, you know, it, there's a lot to talk about <laughs> uh, when you really get into it. So in a nutshell, that's our project. And the project is, you know, is still on social media. And I just actually 
right really recently have I have some new students from my semester this semester posting in a smaller way uh, some of their results of the color connection from this semester and we will continue to kind of have those platforms open one of our ideas is to uh, we'd love to have uh, you know share our lesson plan with other art faculty from other campuses and let them do the assignment and post it on the same social media platform uh, so that we could kind of reach out to other other geographic places and see what color means to them. Uh, so that was one of our concepts. And uh, Jose has been really working on kind of putting that together so it's something that could be shared, you know, uh, between campuses as well, as far as making it a lesson if anybody's interested. So any questions? I can stop sharing my screen at this point and we can just kind of have Q&A. I think I have a question. <laughs> I do have a question. I, I really like this project and I like all the ideas about the car, color connection. And I it is wonderful. And I would like to say, you know, uh, maybe in the future, you're able to have another project, uh, another color connection um, project connecting the Eastern culture and the Western cultures, because we have like a dramatic different, you know, color patterns and color, you know, preferences in our culture and tradition. So that's mm -hmm. wonderful. And I, I think I, we would love that. Yeah. And I, I my question is like, uh, how do you get this? I get to the idea of having this color connection project. Uh, well, first of all, you can always email me at hjones at genesee.edu. I can send out the lesson plan and some of the examples. Um, Jose also is, you know, is available in Mexico. He's been reaching out to other colleges there. And we're putting together, Jose, I might let you talk about what you've been putting together as far as the um, kind of the material to share. Yeah, we, we have this... Um... All these uh, pictures and even the the expo in files in a Dropbox, so it's like a traveling exposition. Uh, in order to engage students, you could uh, really like print or or have those materials handed to your uh, uh, students or classes, and then spark that. Um, uh, willing to collaborate because that that's that's one of the key things like uh, uh, Heather and I we go way back seven seven years of working and, and it's not only uh, like a sugar-coated uh, a successful collaboration so like our first ones were kind of uh, um, failures or experiments because we were uh, asking them to do a lot of things and, and we were trying to get the channels very controlled. And when we jump into social media, in fact, like the, the Instagram page is very recent because they are changing. Like the human beings, societies, context are continuously organically changing. And, and uh, we were trying to adapt to a very more um, easy way to connect through empathy and sometimes the, the 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 surprises are just like Heather say when they are like fully engaged they come up with another uh different thing so uh we can give you all of it but it's very 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 much about reading what your students want to do and are willing to do so that they uh you you kind of give them this the the, the paths but they follow what they are able and uh, um, my students were delighted with Heather and and Liam, and they even they made uh, some presentations like uh, extra of the class, extra of the colors, just to uh, just to share with her uh, the uh, special interest points in the city, and that came way, uh, only from them. It was not a part of the credit. It was not in the program. It was not. And they say, okay, we're gonna sort out this places that we as locals wanted to share with her and they made little presentations and with the pictures and with the colors so she could travel and, and see and know the city or know the towns 
near the city. It was very, very special. But that's that's the surprises that you get when, when the platform is right and when you kind of entice them to really own the, the willing to share. I'm sure that in the East culture, it's going to be so rich of uh, colors and, and, and willingness. So it's just how the, the, the proper buttons to push to get that outcome. Yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah so just, oh, just to summarize quickly, what, what Jose is saying too is it could be as simple as getting the lesson plan and having the students focus on color in their daily lives and share them on our social media platform. Our alumni will respond. Uh, yeah. You know, so there, there's a, then you have students from New York and Mexico commenting on whoever chooses to do this assignment. Uh, if you want to take it a step further, we do have the entire exhibit printable and ready to pre present at your college in the gallery. If you want to yeah. do the project, have our collaboration then also in the gallery that really does enhance the whole experience, yeah. um, that's also an opportunity. So it could be small, but it could also be really large, you know, and in, in, in how people want to kind of jump on board with the project. So back to you, Lin Lin. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I was thinking, um, I'm teaching a strategic communication course, like especially on social media strategic communication. So this could be a, you know, a project for students to do to, you know, showcase the colors and capture some colors in their daily life and present them on their social media pages, like Instagram yeah. or whatever. So just to make some connection about this, you know, color project and um, let people know like their their different perspectives and different sense of color or aesthetics in life, right? Yeah. So that's very nice. Yeah, thank Absolutely. you for th thank you for this presentation. I really like it. Lin, Lin email me at hjones at genesee.edu and I'll send you the 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 lesson plan and the basic materials. That'd be oh, so you. great. Sure. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Any other questions? I was so excited to um to be able to host you because when I read the, the description, you know, we've done some other COIL projects before that we've hosted and I'm always just amazed about what comes out of it. Like you were saying, Jose, about um, some of the things that the students create, not just in alignment with the project, but above and beyond because they're mm -hmm. motivated, they're moved, like it's intrinsic, right? Their engagement is just so authentic. And I love yeah. seeing that. Um, you could tell how excited they were in the yeah. gallery exhibit right? Yeah. To showcase their own work. I think it's wonderful. And it teaches us to be more mindful of color in our surroundings and the joy that that can bring to you. So mm. yeah, thank yes. you for that. If folks are interested in figuring out how to do this um, in connecting with an international partner, did you vote, you went through COIL to, to get connected? Okay. Yes. So we'll share that with folks, coil.suny.edu. Um, and I like how you talked about, you know, how do you go about getting started? You're determining your project, you're looking for alignments in your learning outcomes, and then thinking about how you can leverage technology for student collaboration and creation. So those are those are awesome steps um, and a great kind of guidance for those of us who might be interested in trying to do this. Yes, I think I think one of the successful points for us, too, was keeping it fun. Yeah. And keeping it um, engaging in a way that was Actually, it had simpler is better. When yeah. we tried to do projects that were too complex, plus the language barrier and the culture difference, it got stressful. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things we learned early on, right, Jose? Yes. <laughs> this project was successful because they were like, yeah, I, I want to do that. You know, and I think that was a, a real win for the for the, uh, the the collaboration. Go ahead, Jose. And one uh, other thing is that um, we as academics are trying to map the, the the things that go beyond the learning outcomes of the of the simple experience, and uh, um, we have uh, shared these in uh, Brazil, in uh, in the U.S., in Mexico, in the various universities, in uh, congresses, and uh, as a lecturer sharing the results. We are continuously learning. One of the things that I would uh, want to share is that the level of confidence of these guys who are speaking in another language here really sets like a like a, a, the class in here in Mexico is called globalization. So 
I, I think it's, it's like a window of the whole world. Like uh, the, the, there's other geographies, other cultures, other people. And so I would, I have been, I just when, when, when Heather took off, uh, the, this, this group of guys who were like, a, a, when they knew that Heather was visiting and, and staying here in the research project in presence, we have a spike of, uh, signing up to that class. The class yeah. was always like 10, 15 students because they had to have a minimum level of English. And you heard that the, the Mexican girl, Abby, now the, the spike of level of English, the dominance of the language, is it's through the roof. The number of students who sign up to the Heather's class, it's uh, like it was double. It was mm -hmm. a lot because it's an optional class. Not, not, not everyone mm -hmm. has to take it, but they were willing to take it. Mm -hmm. And now those students are in process to get uh, the... Um, mobility experience so they are trying to go another semester now to another university so the scope and the level of confidence in these uh, 22 guys is it's it's a i'm tracking them just to write also about those findings because it's not a learning outcome but you can see the traces of what uh, the work allows uh, people not just as students of a program but as human beings mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love that you're tracking that impact that's really great to see what you know, outcome yeah. you know happens from this I don't really hear from the students much once in a while on social media but my son who traveled with me who was their age mm -hmm. they're still they're still texting <laughs> <Juan> Jose <laughs> and I think there's uh, yeah. other students who connected <laughs> the project who are still chatting back and forth also and uh, what I'm hearing from him is hey they want to visit they want to explore the, it, it gives them the the uh, kind of the confidence to to explore going to other countries mm -hmm. and trying things you know um making more bridges like this so I think that's also yeah. a global skill in all careers moving forward to be open to globalization and global experiences and connecting yeah. like that it's uh you know this this is where the world is is headed so yeah, yeah. great mm -hmm. thank you right. i'm going to share our um our closing slide and let lynn wrap us up just for the um for the recording purposes but i i want to thank you personally for for doing this for us today thank you very much it was a pleasure thank you Thank you, Heather and Jose, for sharing your expertise with our community for practice of practice, and also thank you all, uh, to all who attended for uh, for attention and participation. Um, the full schedule of the session for National Distance Learning Week can be found at the first link uh, in the chat, and I think Erin is sharing with us. And the recordings will be posted there as well throughout the week. Um, National Dist Distance Learning Week is sponsored by the U.S. Distance Learning Association, so we invite you to check out their website for more events happening this week from other institutions around the country. All right. Okay, thank you.